after 48 years of American sovereignty, the people of the Philippines assume the status of an independent nation. The transfer is made on the 4th of July, a day full of significance for these Yanks. Huge crowds jam Manila to watch the birth of the Republic, which regains its independence through the voluntary action of the American people. In a message, President Truman assured our continued support. The new nation looks forward to prosperity. Exceedingly poor after Japanese occupation, the Philippines will receive reparations and free trade concessions from the United States. Manuel Rojas, newly elected to the presidency, takes the oath of office as Ambassador Paul McNutt looks on. An old Philippine resident, General Douglas MacArthur, arrives with a special message. Forty-eight years ago, the mantle of American sovereignty fell over this land and this people. It was the beneficent sovereignty of a liberator, pledged to be withdrawn as soon as the well-being of the people would safely permit. America never wavered in that purpose. America today redeems that pledge. This land and this people that I have known so long love so well. On June 17, 1932, 17,000 United States military veterans of World War I and 25,000 of their friends and family gathered in Washington, D.C. to demand early payment of their service certificate war bonuses. Although the bonuses were not due to be paid until 1945, the Great Depression had hit the United States, and these veterans were floundering financially. General Douglas MacArthur, Chief of Staff of the Army, personally led U.S. troops to forcibly drive away his fellow veterans. Even though future five-star general and president, Major Dwight David Eisenhower, serving as an aide to MacArthur, counseled him not to have anything to do with the eviction. Major George Patton, future general and World War II hero, personally led a cavalry charge against the protesting veterans, including a man that had saved Patton's life during World War I. The use of military force against unarmed U.S. war veterans is just one of ten arguably shameful or stupid things we are listing here to demonstrate why some people think that Douglas MacArthur was a jerk and not a hero. As a question for my students, do you agree with MacArthur's critics? Was he a hero or a jerk? Please tell us what you think in the comments section below this video. Number 10. Return to the Philippines. Although the Japanese could have been defeated sooner had the U.S. followed a different strategy, MacArthur insisted on retaking the Philippines first to satisfy his own ego and make good on his I shall return boast. What an ego. Perhaps we shall return would have been more tactful. Number 9. Acceptance of Payoff from the Philippines, 1942. A dirty little secret kept quiet until 1979 was the fact that MacArthur, already paid as a U.S. general and also as a Philippine field marshal at the same time, was paid a $500,000 bonus by the President of the Philippines. By contrast, Dwight Eisenhower was also offered money by the Philippine President Quezon, but had the class to refuse it. Number 8. Vanity Upon assignment as Chief of Staff of the Army, MacArthur took to calling himself MacArthur in some sort of convoluted royal wee form. He also worked at his desk wearing a fancy Japanese kimono and smoked his cigarettes in a jeweled cigarette holder. Not only did he rashly make the boast about returning to the Philippines, but when he did return, he was dropped off the landing craft ramp right onto the beach. That would not do for this publicity hound, so he had the landing restaged and refilmed so that he got off in the water and waded to the beach. Number 7. Got that one wrong. 1944. 
On December 26, 1944, MacArthur announced that the island of Lete, an important island of the Philippines, was secure and only mopping up was necessary. After that announcement, over the next several months, over 27,000 Japanese were killed on Lete. Around the same time, General Willoughby estimated there were about 134,000 Japanese troops defending the island of Luzon, the largest Philippine island, and the next major target. MacArthur derisively called that bunk when, in fact, there actually were 287,000 Japanese troops on Luzon. Number 6, Immunity for War Criminals, 1945. MacArthur gave the dreaded Unit 731 members of the Japanese Army immunity from war crimes charges after the war in order to get their research on germ warfare and other human experiment results. These murderous psychopaths escaped justice because of MacArthur's miscalculation. He also refused advice to force Emperor Hirohito to abdicate, even though many members of the royal family asked him to force the abdication. Royal family members were not prosecuted for war crimes, even though the emperor and some of the others certainly deserved to be prosecuted. Number 5. Miscalculation about Chinese, 1950. After successfully kicking the North Koreans out of South Korea and moving right up North Korea itself, MacArthur was warned that the CIA estimated about 200,000 Chinese troops were now in North Korea with more to follow. MacArthur scoffed at such information, and U.S. forces were surprised and overrun when the Chinese masses attacked. MacArthur's reaction was to contemplate the use of radioactive poisons against the enemy. Number 4. Fired for Insubordination, 1951 After running his mouth time and again, second-guessing the president and national policy, thus undermining the U.S. war effort in Korea, MacArthur was relieved of command, a humiliating end to a long career. President Truman was struggling mightily to avoid World War III springing out of the Korean War, and MacArthur was personally baiting the Chinese and advocating widening the conflict. Number 3. Medal of Honor Travesty, 1942 After being evacuated from the Philippines, leaving his troops to death and misery as prisoners of the Japanese, MacArthur was awarded the Medal of Honor for political reasons, despite the fact that he showed no heroism or particular efficiency in losing the islands. In fact, he was huddled up in an underground bunker and refused to go outside to see the situation or to rally the troops. He was derisively known as Dugout Doug. Dwight Eisenhower objected to this award personally to General Marshall, but was overruled. Number 2. Loss of the Philippines, 1941-42 Despite warnings from Washington and news of the Pearl Harbor attack, the MacArthur-led U.S. and Filipino forces were taken by surprise so thoroughly that the air forces available to MacArthur were destroyed on the ground right off the bat. Though told repeatedly to initiate the war plans, MacArthur did nothing, despite his air officer asking permission to attack Japanese bases in Formosa. Despite outnumbering the Japanese, MacArthur managed to lose the strategically important Philippines anyway, in his haste to escape the attacking Japanese, MacArthur abandoned Manila and declared it an open city without any consultation with the U.S. naval commander, resulting in many tons of U.S. supplies burned to avoid capture by the Japanese. Number 1. Suppression of the Bonus March, 1932 it is bad enough that a veteran army officer would order troops to attack war veterans down on their luck, but MacArthur insisted on leading the operation personally. Bizarre for an Army Chief of Staff to do so. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated. March along, sing a song.